adventure game. Solve the riddle, great and small. Adventure game. Adventure games, he loves them all. Every day is a new quest, exploring north, south, east, and west. Point and click to find the answers that we seek. Adventure game. Hello there, fellow adventurers. After delving into the depths of detritus, which turned out to be pretty shitty. Yes, pure excrement. Right, okay. Well, well said, Grand Inquisitor. I thought I'd get back to something more wholesome. And what could be more wholesome than cute talking animals? Can I tell you a funny squirrel joke to lighten the mood? Oh no, please don't. The punchline will be all about your nuts. What the? How did you know that? Beyond the Edge of Owlsgard was one of my favourite adventure games from last year, along with the excavation of Hobbs Barrow, Lucy Dreaming, and Blood Nova. This is the passion project of solo developer Watch the Toast. Sorry, I'm busy watching the toast. Throughout the game there's an insightful behind the scenes commentary by developer Hans. Hello and welcome to the behind the scenes mode of Beyond the Edge of Oldsgard. A game that, um, looking back now, uh, has a way too long title. That's why I will probably uh, refer to it as just Oldsgard from now on. That's, that's a bit easier, you know. <laughs> Starting the game, we have the option of either classic or modern mode. Modern mode being with hidden items more obvious and some time puzzles more forgiving. Of course, hardcore adventurers should choose classic mode. Just like going full monkey and return to Monkey Island. Oh yeah, I want it all! Give me the full monkey! Now we have one of the greatest introductions to a main character. Whoa! Oh. A robot in my world? Greetings! May I introduce myself? I'm Finn! And I must say, you sheep are a wonderful means of transportation. The sheep don't appear for the rest of the game, so their only function is to bring our rambunctious roebuck into play. Right from the start we can see this is going to be a fun light-hearted adventure that we can skip through without a care in the world. Huh? <laughs> okay, so as you can see this game has some old school Sierra style deaths, which can actually get pretty gruesome. The story is that Finn is looking for his parents who have mysteriously disappeared, and this leads him on a quest that takes him beyond the familiar kingdom of Velahill, which is inhabited by various animals who have created their own society. Dear townsfolk, I, as the ambassador of our king, bring you good news in these dark days. These scenes are bursting with life and pixelated personality that make you say, Woohoo! Yeah! Awesome! I hope that's how you do it nowadays. Apart from the wolves lurking in the forest, everything seems peaceful. But there's something even more dangerous than wolves lurking beneath the surface. Uh oh. That is definitely not a wolf! Hang on, can't we just be friends? We animals are friendly to all strangers. Let's be friends. <laughs> Guess not! The robots went through various different designs throughout production. This one looks like it was designed by Boston Dynamics, except that I don't think they make killer robots. Ah! Ow! No! 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 What an excruciatingly painful demise. Look, I've had just about enough of you, Grand Inquisitor. I shall burn you all alive, and you especially, geek. Finn 
Finn soon meets a companion to help him on his journey. Before you ask, I'm Gwen. Gwen and Finn often have to work together to solve puzzles, like figuring out how to deal with this rather unfriendly wolf. That little fall didn't bother me at all. Your time has come, intruder! It took me a while to solve this puzzle, which is based on one from the devs' previous project called King's Cat, where we explore the castle of an evil wizard. Gwen the Owl was originally going to be the main character, as we see from these early prototypes. It's fascinating to see how the game design evolved into the final product. For example, there was originally going to be grumpy cats living in the wolf territory in giant yarn balls. There's so many funny and colourful characters in Owl's Guard to fall in love with, like the Queen of the Magpies... Oh, stop! This always makes me blush. We should meet for coffee and grains sometime. Your treat, of course. Or a seal captain that farts in his sleep. Uh, oh boy, <laughs> actually I I probably should have removed this um, feature, but I still think it's kind of funny in a dumb way. Of course, farts are always funny. Just ask the fart ninjas. The next chapter in the story takes place on the Isle of Misty Towers, which we can sail to with the help of our favourite farting seal captain, as long as he doesn't inexplicably sail off the edge of the world at the last minute. Back to the fog! Bullock, are you out of your damn mind?! We are so close to our destination, we are so close, like, literally, right there! And then you just decide, like a sadistic person, to turn and just go into the fog and kill us! What is wrong with you?! You are a sadist! I will not stand for this! I will not stand for this in any way, shape, or form! That's it! Call my agent! I want my agent! Hello there, fellow adventurer. Agent AGG here. Oh, Finn. Have you made it beyond the edge of Owlsguard yet? What? You sailed into the fog and died? A seal captain that farts. All right, all right, all right, calm down, calm down. Just reload the game and make sure that farting seal steers you in the right direction this time. What, you didn't save? Well, you're fucked then. Once on the island, it seems peaceful enough. What a picturesque looking coast. I feel like I'm walking inside a painting that someone is currently looking at. Funny thought, but also quite absurd. Yeah, you're right. We soon find out though that it's not so safe here. <coughs> the sound effects of the robot are actually created from moaning noises. If I would insert the original sound effects here, it would probably make this scene sound super disturbing and probably also a bit uh, not safe for work. Like everything else in Owlsgard, the music and sound are made with loving care, including that satisfying jingle when you do something right. By the way, <laughs> I I absolutely love that noise that you hear when Finn empties the bucket of mud. I think this is my favorite sound effect from the entire game because it reminds me so much of older shows like uh, Ren and Stimpy. Don't you know cartoons will ruin your mind? Look what it's done to your brain! This is all part of the light-hearted humor, like the age-old adventure game joke of sticking large items into your pants. Wow, even this massive thing fits in my pants. Dude, too much information. Is that a gutter in your pocket, or are you just pleased to see me? 
There are more memorable characters to interact with here, like a super slimy snail. Greetings, my slimy friend. Please. Call me Shashinka. Shashinka Svetlana Ben Slime. And a bull called Sven, who looks like a fierce fighter but is really a sensitive artist at heart. He talks about creating an interactive play that sounds strangely familiar. At times, it was also necessary for the main character to pick up items and use them. And there are more and more items. I had to get a tailor to help me make the pockets of the hero's costume bigger. I think our time is not yet ripe for something like that. Hey, I think this medium certainly has its appeal. For a rather special type of animal, at least. <sighs> Maybe you're right. That's right, adventure gamers really are a special type of animal. The objective here is to activate all the towers and open a doorway that leads to spoilers, so we don't want to go in there now. Oh, thou ancient, stony, sinister, and exceedingly disquieting, great portal of entrance! Are you going to open up when Gwen and I get all puffy-eyed? Oh, please! In the final chapter, Finn finds himself alone. And I won't give too much away, except that this is definitely not the happy-go-lucky place we started in. And the cityscape is inspired by Beneath a Steel Sky. The game takes a very dark and sinister turn here that is quite unexpected, and challenges the player to face a serious threat to the animal world. <laughs> that tickled a little bit. There's two endings, the good and the bad, and they're both worth seeing. Only with the good ending though do you get to see the credits roll, followed by a firework display with a lot of the Kickstarter backer names. Oh, the Adventure Game Geek. That name sounds familiar. Beyond the Edge of Alsgard is a totally charming game that enchants you with its jaunty melody. Ew, disgusting. 